Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's second video. So if you're already on JMA Friday, you can find that video here on the homepage. Just scroll down the page a little bit and uh, you'll be able to see it um, above the desk. So uh, it's going to be quite a cold month ahead, actually, if the uh, Jam 8 and CFS B2 models are right. Uh, they're going for cold weather pretty much from beginning to end. I do wonder whether they're going to be over top with it. Um, but uh, you can only say what the models are showing, and uh, they are both going for really quite cold weather from now. Uh, right way through into uh, Wellington Mark. So check out JMA Friday and uh, see what you think. This video is going to have a look at the weather for the, for the next week to 10 days. One of the reasons these orange models are probably going quite cold is because of um, developments in the stratosphere in the next few days. going to get a sudden stratospheric warming event taking place. Uh, and I'll bring you up to date with everything that's going on there. Uh, very shortly. So that's actually where, where we're going to begin for today's um, first video, uh, today's second video, I should say. And then we will go on and have a look at the uh, weather for next week to 10 days. So let's begin by having a look at the situation in the uh, stratosphere. This is the latest from the uh, JMA. This is looking at uh, 30 HPA, which is one of the levels of the atmosphere in the stratosphere over the North Pole. The grey line tells us where we've been with the temperature temperature or where we should be trending with the uh, temperature at 30 HPA at this point of the year. The black line shows where we've been through the season going back to September. Uh, so this is where we are with the temperature at 30 HPA right now. Um, so that's just before and uh, just after uh, February just there. Uh, so we're still a little bit colder than average actually. We're still a little bit under that grey line at the moment with the temperature at 30 HPA in the stratosphere. But if we have a look at 10 HPA, which is a bit higher up, you see that actually it is a little bit warmer than average now uh, at uh, 10 HPA. So again, the same idea, the grey line is the trend for uh, the time of the year. Uh, the black line where we've been through this season, starting off in September there once again. Uh, and you'll see that's where we are right now with that black line. So we're a little bit above the grey line. It's a little, bit, a little bit warmer than average in terms of the temperature at 10 HPA uh, over the North Pole. Now, what's going to happen in the next few days is that that black line is going to uh, lift up. We'll have to see how far up we uh, lift it. I suspect we'll probably lift it up to that sort of level just there. So it will be quite a major one. I'm not sure it'll quite reach the fresh out of a sudden stratospheric warming. Um, but we'll see. It might go higher than uh, I'm anticipating there. And uh, however high we get that uh, black line, of course, the more intense the warming that's occurring uh, at uh, 10 HPA. Let's have a look at the forecast from the GFS then. So this is the current situation in terms of the temperature at 10 HPA. You've got the blue colours just here indicating those cold temperatures in the stratosphere over the uh, North Pole. Watch what happens very quickly into the weekend. We start to lift those temperatures up. So greens and yellows are displacing the blue colours as we go into the weekend. And then we still get this double sort of warm, uh, warming through the early part of next week. We get one area of uh, quite intense warming over towards Russia, another area of quite intense warming over towards Canada and Greenland. In between, uh, we've got those green and yellow colours as well. That's splitting, by looking at it, splitting the uh, polar vortex um, at its roots in the stratosphere, in, in any case. Um, then we get a second burst of warming, which is quite uh, interesting. So this is, again, focused around Canada and uh, Greenland uh, through the last stage of next week. We get another bout of quite intense uh, warming going on then. And that just intensifies over Canada. So again, still this idea of uh, a second warming of the stratosphere, quite intense warming of the stratosphere over Greenland and, Ca and Canada uh, over that side of the Arctic. Can't maintain those sort of levels for all that long, so the temperature very, very slowly starts to uh, lower. But even right out to the very end of the GFS run, which is 25th of February, we're still quite substantially above average with those temperatures. That's how the GFS is seeing things. This is the uh, ECMWF via the University of Berlin website. Uh, this is where we start off, and again, we're looking at 10 HPA. This is where we start off that, um, that black, uh, let's change the colour, that black cross just there indicates the actual uh, North Pole of the 
uh, Northern Hemisphere. Um, and you can see that for tomorrow, uh, we've got those black colours, uh, the blue colours, I should say, firmly over the top of the uh, North Pole. So the cold temperatures um, continue at 10 HPA in the stratosphere. But look what happens by the time you get through to uh, 96 hours, which is the 12th of uh, February. Obviously, it's warmed up quite substantially there over the pole, really stretched out from Greenland and Canada over towards uh, Russia over there and all points in between looking uh, a good deal warmer in terms of the stratosphere. That takes us up to 192 hours, still warm over North Pole. You'll notice those red colours appearing over Canada and uh, Greenland. So this is sort of the uh, Greenland, Canada area uh, just here, and you'll notice those red colours appearing, indicating that the second burst of warming happening over Canadian Arctic is actually going to be more substantial than the first um, bout of warming of the stratosphere. Uh, we move up to uh, 240 hours, uh, which is the 18th of February, still keeping those uh, warm colours well and truly in place, particularly over uh, towards Canada, maybe just lowering the temperature ever so slightly. And that's what you'd expect to see because we can't maintain those temperatures all that long. So starting to lower the temperature a little bit at uh, 240 hours, day 10, 10 HPA. And then the question will be then to look lower down in the atmosphere to see whether we've got signs of a tropospheric uh, response, a response within the troposphere, and that's the boundary layer of the atmosphere weather in taking place. So for that, we have to go a bit lower down, have to go down to 30 HPA. Again, this is the sort of current situation with those blue colours there uh, through the uh, North Pole, we see that the uh, temperatures right now at 30 HPA are really uh, very cold indeed. We move on, though, and have a look at 96 hours, which is 12th of uh, February, and we are seeing signs that the uh, temperature at 30 HPA, remember, lower down than 10 HPA, the temperature at 30 HPA is starting to lift up. It's starting to uh, warm up. So this, this tells us that the warming is beginning to get closer towards the uh, troposphere. And this continues then up to 192 hours, where again, we have got a relatively warm looking temperature profile there being forecast by the ECMWF model at uh, 30 HPA. And then we go through to day 10, which is again, the 18th of February. Notice red colors are starting to appear after we've had that very intense burst of warming around Canada um, a couple of days before at 10 HPA, now we're beginning to see those intense warm colours beginning to appear at 30 HPA, closer towards the uh, troposphere. Do bear in mind, where you've got the warming taking place isn't necessarily, if it gets into the troposphere, where you're going to set up a blocking area of high pressure. It doesn't guarantee, for example, that with this burst of, um, of the, these bursts of warm temperatures in the stratosphere over Canada at this point, it doesn't guarantee that's where the blocking will sit over Canada. The blocking might sit uh, somewhere else. So it's almost like um, throwing a bomb, if you like, into the uh, sort of um, atmospheric system uh, over the North Pole, uh, you blow up all the pieces and then you wait to see where it all settles down again uh, after you've uh, thrown that sort of bomb into the atmosphere, if you like, and blown everything apart. So it's all on course with this uh, stratospheric warming. The only thing I'm not sure about is whether it's quite reaching the temperature threshold over the North Pole itself uh, for a sudden stratospheric warming. Definitely it is over Canada, what we see over Canada uh, around the 17th uh, or so of the month of February. Uh, that is reaching the sort of level of a sudden stratospheric warming. Whether that's quite reached the level over the actual North Pole itself, I'm not sure. But the Canadian side of the Arctic is very impactful uh, in any case, that warming that we have over the Canadian side of the Arctic. Clearly, it's enough to reverse the zonal wind. So again, uh, we look at wind and fluxes from the uh, University of Berlin website. Again, this is all based on the ECWF model. And we can see that's where we are right now with the zonal winds. Already at quite a weakish level, really. But uh, the zonal winds look like they're going to be reversing 
in the next few days, going negative, going easterly, if you like, before slowly trying to claw their way back up um, towards sort of uh, uh, neutral situation. But um, that's at one HPA, right at the very top of the stratosphere. And then we have to wait to see how that downwells through the stratosphere and into the troposphere. But this all looks very significant. The UK Met Office has been talking about this quite a lot, uh, I know, on their website and also um, on their uh, Twitter feed. And I think even BC forecasters, so, oh, forecasters have mentioned this, which is quite unusual uh, for that to happen. So obviously, kind of like the UK Met Office, are expecting something fairly significant to occur with this uh, either sudden stratospheric warming or stratospheric warming of the North Pole. Of course, we have to wait to see what the response is in the atmosphere once this has happened. Right, coming back to the next week to 10 days. So uh, these are the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles. The next two weeks, we're looking at the ensemble for London today. Red line here is the upper air temperature average for London. A uh, bit up and down with the temperatures over the next few days. So uh, it's going to be going quite cold later in the weekend through the start of next week. And then beyond that, it looks like we continue to be up and down really. Although I think still the GFS ensembles for this sort of Final week to 10 days of February, this period just here. I think overall they are training quite cold. We do still have a few warm outlier members, these ones up here. And that's what's holding up the ensemble mean, which is the white line. That's holding up some degree. But I think you can see that as we go into this final week to 10 days of February, it is a long way off, but as we go into this final week to 10 days of February, I think there are more uh, colder ensemble members, really, some of them quite substantially colder than average um, than warmer ensemble members. And it's just these few uh, warmer members up here, really, that are, that is holding up the ensemble mean. Otherwise, it would look quite a lot colder without those ensemble members. So I still think the GFS ensembles are uh, trending quite cold here for the final week to 10 days of February, probably picking up on that sudden stratospheric warming. Temperature anomalies in the next week are going to be quite cold anyway. This is taking us from the 9th to 17th of February, coming out. Uh, a little bit colder than average, as it is for uh, most western parts of Europe as well. Precipitation anomalies are above average, so colder and wetter than average in the week ahead means there could be a little bit of wintry potential. That's how the uh, GFS is looking for Tuesday. So low pressure is going to be dominating through the weekend and in the start of next week. Notice the um, jet stream, which is indicated by the black line here, that's two hours south. So we're on the cold side of the jet, bringing these areas of low pressure in. They could either bring wet weather or possibly even some sleet or snow through the early part of next week. Then we push this, this area of low pressure just here on Wednesday, a bit further northwards. That's going to have quite a big warm sector with it. So it turns pretty stormy, actually, through the middle part of next week. Very tightly packed isobar, so there could be severe gale force winds. Uh, unsettled weather continues then into the end of next week. And then very gradually, as we shift towards day 10, looks like we're starting to build up a bit of a ridge in the Atlantic, and also we're beginning to raise the heights around here. Could that be first in indications of a stratus of a response within the troposphere to the uh, stratospheric warming. I think it's a little bit early to say that and you would probably expect the troposphere response to be a week or so further down the line actually. Uh, to this. But anyway, up to the 19th of February, it looks like we're having a go at turning things colder, although the GFS doesn't really get there, actually. We're going to the extended range. This is a 6 o'clock run. If we go into the extended range, um, we just keep low pressure close to catch, so don't really force anything via the blocking. However, if I show the ECMWF, that looks much more encouraging from a cold perspective. So early next week, again, we're on the cold side of the jet stream. The jet stream is uh, tracking to our south. We've got these areas of low pressure as well, close to the country, bringing quite wet and uh, windy conditions. Turns stormy through the middle part of next week. Both models in agreement about that. That's a major area of low pressure. It might be a named storm if it verifies. Uh, we go through to the end of next week, still looking pretty stormy, pretty unsettled as well. 
But then we run up towards day 10. This is Saturday, 17th of February, where we're starting to build this ridge up in the Atlantic and making more of it than uh, the GFS does. So that's how things look on uh, Sunday, the 18th of February. And this is actually day 10, Monday the 19th, where we have set up quite a significant blocking feature there with ridge, the high pressure north, and also... Uh, north east. So we've got a Scandinavian high. We've got the trough down here. And of course, that's opening the door to easterly and uh, north easterly winds. So that looks pretty cold there as we get through towards day 10. Pretty cold and pretty blocked from the ECM WF. Bear in mind, the GFS doesn't go anything like that sort of level on the latest run. That's how the GFS is looking at day 10. That's how the ECM is looking. They are, the ECM is much, um, much more blocked uh, and colder, consequently, compared to the uh, GFS. So still uncertainty about how much blocking uh, we're going to get as we get through to the end of next week. But after this warming up of strategy, I would expect as we go further on into February, probably even into March, is something that's showing up in January Friday, as we go further on into February and into March, the risk of blocking uh, will increase. Finally, the debilt ensembles from the ECM WF model are uh, looking like this. Uh, these are temperatures, by the way, surface temperatures, I should say, not upper air temperatures. These are reflecting surface temperatures at debilt in Holland. So pretty chilly through the weekend and into the start of next week. Then through the middle part of next week, we're going through a uh, milder phase. But then it looks like the temperatures are starting to head downwards somewhat. Uh, there is a little bit of a co uh, cooling trend appearing there for that final sort of 10-day period of February. It's not a dramatic cooling uh, yet, although there are some really quite cold ensemble members that are dipping down uh, to really quite a very cold level, um, these ones down here. It's not a dramatic warming yet, but I think from where we start off at, which is just there to where we are there, uh, and then I think we're training downwards there. It does look as though um, temperatures are on their way down to me with the uh, both the Tabilt ensembles and also the GFS ensembles as we're moving through into the final week to 10 days of February. So that's uh, brought you up to date, both with the month ahead, look ahead with the JMA and CFS V2 models, and also in the shorter time frame, the stratospheric warming is all on course. It's going to, looks like going to split the vortex and uh, reverse the zonal wings, and we will then have to wait and see what the tropospheric responses in the troposphere, what the tropospheric response is to that as we go into the final week to 10 days of February. Watch this space. It's a weekend forecast coming up for you tomorrow. Uh, so come back for that then. Um, but that's all for now. And thanks for watching.